Carotid artery stenosis refers to narrowing of the carotid arteries in the neck, usually secondary to atherosclerosis. Plaques build up in the carotid arteries, reducing the diameter of the lumen. There is a risk of parts of the plaque breaking away and becoming an embolus, traveling to the brain and causing an embolic stroke. The risk factors for developing carotid artery stenosis are the same as for atherosclerosis and arterial disease in other areas, such as age, male sex, smoking, hypertension, poor diet, reduced physical activity, and raised cholesterol. Patients who have a transient ischemic attack or a stroke are investigated for carotid artery stenosis usually with a carotid ultrasound scan. Patients with carotid artery stenosis are very likely to have arterial disease and atherosclerosis elsewhere. They're at a high risk of coronary artery disease and myocardial infarction, or heart attacks. Let's talk about the classification. The severity of carotid artery stenosis is categorized as mild when there's less than a 50% reduction in diameter, moderate when there's a 50 to 69% reduction in diameter, and severe when there's a 70% or more reduction in diameter. Next, let's talk about the presentation. Carotid artery stenosis is usually asymptomatic with no symptoms. Usually, it's diagnosed after a transient ischemic attack or a stroke. A carotid bruit may be heard on examination. This is a whooshing sound heard with a stethoscope over the affected carotid artery, which is caused by turbulent flow around the stenotic area during systole, during contraction of the heart. Next, let's talk about making the diagnosis. A carotid ultrasound scan is usually the initial investigation to diagnose and assess carotid artery stenosis. A CT or MRI angiogram may be used to assess the stenosis in more detail before surgical interventions. Next, let's talk about the management. Conservative management involves addressing modifiable risk factors and medical therapy. This involves having a healthy diet and exercise, stopping smoking, good management of comorbidities such as hypertension and diabetes, antiplatelet medications such as aspirin, clopidogrel or ticagrelor, and lipid-lowering medications such as atorvastatin. Surgical interventions are considered where there's more significant stenosis. And the options are carotid endarterectomy or angioplasty and stenting. Endarterectomy involves an incision in the neck, opening the carotid artery and scraping out the plaque. This is the first line treatment for most patients who require surgical intervention. Angioplasty and stenting is an alternative to endarterectomy. This is an endovascular procedure, which involves a catheter inserted into the femoral artery in the groin, passed through the aorta under x-ray guidance, and up to the affected carotid artery. A balloon is inflated in the narrowed area to widen the lumen of the artery, and this is called angioplasty, and then a stent is left in place to keep the artery open, and this is called stenting. 